This single F1 piston costs £50,000 and for good reason. It has to withstand over 200G when moving up and down in the engine at over 80 miles an hour. F1 engines cost over £7 million each and each of these pistons are one of the key components that help them produce over 1,000 horsepower. But why does it cost 1,000 times more than the piston out of your road car? It turns out there are many very good reasons for insane costs. If you're into F1, then you'll know that you can't start an F1 engine like you can with a normal road car. The incredible tolerances mean the pistons are seized in the cylinders until the car is warmed up. So the engineers have to take at least 30 minutes to warm the coolant and the oil before they can start the engine. So how come you don't need to do this in your road car? As we know, engines create power by burning fuel and oxygen in the cylinders. This action releases a lot of heat and causes the gas in the cylinder to rapidly expand. The piston is forced downwards, pushing the conrod which turns the crank and ultimately powers your car. To allow the pistons to move, you need a gap between them and the cylinder. However, if that gap is too big, it would allow a lot of gas to slip past the edges, resulting in a loss of pressure and much less power. So pistons have rings that sit in these grooves. They seal the gap between the piston and the cylinder and maintain the pressure needed to create so much power. They also ensure that minimal oil from the underside of the piston can get into the combustion chamber and be burnt away. If it's too big, you produce less power. The engine will wear very fast and can have a whole range of problems. If it's too small, the engine can seize. So this is where the engine designers come in. They specify the size of the gap and then set the tolerances on all of these parts. If you produce a part, in reality, it will never be made to the exact sizing as designed. It will be somewhere above or below the designer's dimensions. This is because tools and machines are never perfect. So the designers define a tolerance. This is how big or small the part can be and still be acceptable. So let's say this piston is 40 millimeters tall, but may have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.1 of a millimeter, meaning that if it's above 40.1 mil or below 39.9 mil, it can't be used. The same goes for every other dimension of this part, as it will interact with loads of other parts. If it were even slightly too big or small, it could cause serious issues. This is especially important in something like a piston. The gap between the piston and the cylinder in an F1 engine is as little as 0.15 millimeters, so the gap is only slightly wider than the width of a human hair. The tolerances on the diameter of this piston and the cylinder will be as little as 0.01 of a millimeter. This means the engineers can be sure these parts will fit perfectly together and work correctly every time. However, there is more to it than that. Things expand when they get hot, so all of this will change when the engine gets up to temperature. And due to the various different materials and the varying sizes of the components, they all expand at different rates. In a normal road car, it needs to be able to start from a wide range of temperatures. So the engineers design in a large clearance between the piston and the cylinders. This means that the pistons can work effectively from cold and when at normal operating temperatures. But an F1 engine is all about maximum power and efficiency. So the designers use a much smaller clearance. They design the components so that there is a perfect gap only when running at normal temperatures. This is why the engine block seizes when it's cold. The cylinder block expands more than the cylinders and they free up when the engine is warmed. Hence explaining why the teams pump in warm coolant and oil for about 30 minutes before the starter is used to fire up the engines. It's safe to say these pistons are best with a snug fit and the perfect temperature. If you want a snug fit and the perfect temperature with your F1 merchandise at least, you should check out today's sponsor, Fuel for Fans. They make officially licensed kit for the majority of the F1 teams on the grid. Stuff like t-shirts, caps and jackets. They also have kit from your favourite drivers like Lando and this Max Verstappen top. Now is the perfect time to pick up some of their gear for yourself or for someone else as a gift. They have released a whole range of affordable gift ideas for those who love F1 as much as us. Check them out with the link in the description and use code DRIVER61 for 20% off at checkout. Thanks for fuel for fans and let's get back to the video. 
Something really interesting is that the pistons don't expand evenly. Some areas have thick material and expand more. So the pistons are designed to be slightly oval shaped so that when they heat up they become round. As with any component of an F1 car, it needs to be as light as possible. But inside an engine, weight is even more important. The pistons in an F1 car change direction over 300 times a second. And each of these times, the piston is dragged from a standstill at the top of the cylinder to over 85 miles an hour, and immediately back to a standstill again, all in just a few centimeters of travel. The g-force at either end of the stroke can reach over 200 g, meaning that a 300 gram piston effectively weighs 600 kilograms, which is not much less than the weight of the entire F1 car. So every gram that can be shaved off makes a massive difference. The more weight that's rotating in the engine, the slower it climbs through the revs and the longer the response time to the driver's inputs. They are able to shave it off weight by removing a lot of the metal inside the piston. The top face can be as thin as 5mm and much of the skirt area is removed, leaving only the essential metal remaining. They also need to be extremely strong, but probably not for the reasons you'd expect. If you were to guess, you'd probably expect the forces on the piston to be highest just after the ignition of the fuel, just after the bang, when the pressure in the cylinder is the highest. Well, you're nearly right, the forces after the combustion are huge, but they're actually higher at another point in the cycle. So you know the cycle, the piston is forced down by the rapid expansion of the gases. It reaches the bottom of the stroke and then moves back up to the top again. Here the piston wants to fly straight out the top of the engine and the connecting rod is dragging it back down. The piston actually has to be strong enough to withstand its own weight. The massive acceleration actually stretches and deforms the metal. The piston actually tries to pull itself apart. If the material is not strong enough, it could fail and destroy the engine. F1 engines use an aluminium alloy for this as it's strong enough and much lighter than steel. Different F1 engine manufacturers use different methods to make the pistons. Some machine them directly from a billet of aluminium and some forge it first. Forging is where they get a billet of aluminium, heat it up and pound it into shape at unbelievable pressures. The pistons are forged slightly oversized and then machined down to exact dimensions. Forged pistons can be stronger than billet pistons but can be trickier to create accurate parts and can weigh more. Both methods are much, much stronger than cast pistons in a normal road car, where the metal is melted and poured into a mold. However, casting is much cheaper. This is why you can get a replacement piston for your road car for as little as £50. So not to forget, each piston has thousands of dollars of materials used, tens of hours of machining and forging time already put into them. The pistons, along with other engine components, are then measured by a CMM machine. These measure the parts to within 100 nanometers. This is about 1000 times thinner than the width of a human hair. Then, if one of the hundreds of measurements is higher or lower than needed, it's melted down and started again. The component manufacturers will also x-ray the piston to check for cracks and other imperfections. All of this ensures that all of the pistons produced reach the high quality standards necessary and work effectively at 15,000 RPM. These factors are why they cost so much. The time of the genius engineers, days of skilled machinists time, specialist equipment and extremely expensive materials. A huge amount goes into creating each of the components in an engine that can create over 1000 horsepower. Road car pistons can be made of cheaper materials and use faster processes, meaning they can make them 1000 times cheaper than F1 teams can. If you enjoyed this, check out this other video which I think you'll love. Click here and I'll see you in the next one. If you've watched a couple of our videos, why not subscribe to Drive61 and help support the channel. Cheers and I'll see you next time.